Welcome to Ridge Life, I'm Tim, and today we're going to be installing life-proof vinyl plank flooring by Home Depot in our beautiful log home. We're gonna show you tips and tricks to make this installation easy for yourself and go over some of the fine details of life-proof vinyl plank flooring by Home Depot. We have chosen Walton Oak for our flooring here in our log home. And this model has three widths, has the main width and then two smaller widths that equal the main width. So when you're doing your runs, you'll have multi-width lines. It's gonna make it look so realistic like a wood flooring. Again, with this life proof flooring, it is a rigid core. It is waterproof has a five-year commercial warranty and a lifetime residential warranty. The underlayment is, um, comes with the board and it dampens any kind of uh, sound. Also allows for imperfections in your subflooring. Again, has a rigid core and it is so, so beautiful. And drop lock installation, meaning you just pop it in place and put a little dead blow hammer on it and set it and you are ready to go. We're installing about 1,500 square foot of flooring here in our log home, about two thirds of it downstairs and a third of it upstairs. I brought the boxes up here and we opened them up and separated them into patterns. Now I've done flooring before and there was distinct patterns, maybe five or six. And with the life proof flooring by Home Depot, it's not that way. There are repeating patterns on the boards, but they've shifted the pattern on the board, even flipped it upside down. So there's different color variations and patterns throughout the boards, but you still see something that kind of repeats. So what we've done is I've got the medium boards and the small boards and the large boards all segregated to patterns that repeat on those boards and color variations. That way, when I go to start laying the flooring out, I can get a true random pattern and make it look very, very beautiful. Now you could just pull straight from the boxes, but you may get repeats. And I, I personally don't like that. I like a little bit of randomness in the wood flooring. It makes it look so much more natural. And this is how I do it. When you start getting to your door facings and around odd shaped walls, it is nice to have a multi-tool. This multi-tool will help you cut under the door facings, give you a nice clearance for your board. Now I'd use a, uh, a vinyl plank under it and let this guide over it. Use a little cheater board, something, uh, a scrap piece. It's gonna really help that. Another is a contour gauge. A contour gauge will really help you out when you wanna get under the door facing. Push this under like that and you can see there's your guide. Look at that, that's perfect. These really nice also, again, a cheater board will help you uh, get that nice cut also. And I'll show you what a cheater board is here in just a little bit, but a couple more tools that make this job much easier. There are a bunch more tools you can use to make in installing your drop lock flooring easier. Uh, this is, these tools here come in a kit that has this angled device, a tamping block, and these spacers that allow you to account for the expansion you'll need between the wall and the flooring. You gotta use something to make sure you keep that quarter inch uh, gap. Uh, these move around a little bit and there are a couple of tricks I can show you here in a little bit, but having a rubberized or dead blow hammer really helps in uh, making those joints snap and seal together. And of course you could also choose a pry bar. I guarantee you're gonna need some knee pads though. Some type of uh, pads to keep your, uh, put your knees on or knee pads you can uh, wear uh, because it will be uh, a little tough on the uh, joints if I say. Now, a skill saw, rotary saw, really, really helps in uh, cutting the edges. You can use a utility knife to cut the vinyl plank flooring. It will cut with a utility knife or a table saw, miter saw. Those are all nice things if you have them, but the vinyl plank flooring cuts very, very easily and you can just get by with minimal tools. One of the first things you ask is which way do I lay the flooring in my room? Well, there's rules to answer that question. The first rule is you want to run it with your main source of lighting. So if the lighting on our big log home wall comes from here, we want to run it perpendicular to those windows along this way. The second rule is along the longest wall. Now our longest wall is this way. So that would counter rule one running it uh, with the longest wall. Third rule, main entrance. 
you want to run it perpendicular to the main entrance. So the boards will be going this way. That fits the longest wall rule, doesn't it? Now we also have a hallway running just under you that goes this way through the room. You want to run your boards down the hallway. You don't want the little shortcuts, right? So knowing all of these rules, we also have to take into account our floor registers. In some of our back rooms, the floor registers are really close to the walls. So I don't want little pieces, little boards. I want to run them along with the registers. So knowing that we have chose to go with, with the main source of lighting, the loft main source of lighting is up there, it comes this way. So we are going to go with the main source of lighting. So we're going to start on the back left of our rooms with the main source of lighting. So we'll have the boards running this way all the way through our upstairs and downstairs. And you're gonna see how we do it. It's real easy. The final preparation before we install our flooring is making sure our subfloor is clean and level. Make sure you sweep out all the corners, get everything nice and clean, and you want to make sure that your subfloor is smooth and level. Now the, the underlayment that's attached to the life proof can accommodate for some deviation in flooring, but it's best not to have to make it work to do that. You'll get a nice, smoother, solid, sound, uh, really sounding good floor as you walk across it if it's smooth and level. We had a few places where our subfloor wasn't level and we had to sand them smooth. That way there's not that big deviation. Now it can account for some. You want to make sure all your nails and screws are hammered or screwed in tight as well. That makes sure the floor is nice and secure and there's no uh, protrusions up into the underlayment of your life proof flooring. Now before you start grabbing boards and start laying them down for your runs, you want to measure your room width and you can do the math with the length of the board, subtract and see what the, the last board's length will be. Um, I don't like doing too much math, so I like just laying them out, make sure the interlocks are together all the way back. And you can see I would have finished here with like a five inch cut. Now you can get as small as six inch, but I prefer 10 inch to be the last board length, it'd be a minimum of 10 inches. That way you've got a, a, enough flooring to secure it in place where it doesn't come free. Now, if you ever do have a really short one due to a, a corner or a register or something, you can glue those pieces together. Get some Gorilla Glue or some wood glue and uh, glue the last piece on. And there's another trick you can do is, is get a, a a chisel and chisel off the interlocking lips and you can slide them together with a little bit of wood glue on there and that will keep it as well. That works really well when you're up against a wall on that last one that you can't fit in or has to go under a door facing or something. You can trim off that little lip, slide them together with a little bit of glue on there, uh, keep it fastened till it secures and uh, that'll get you on a small board or a close edge like that as well. So we have to kind of cut, cut some of the, the first board, cut it shorter. That way I can get, that way I can get at least 10 inches on this last cut. I like to use painter's tape to hold my little separators against the wall. Uh, they do flop and move around a lot. So the painter's tape really helps hold them in place. They are graduated so you can adjust the depth. I just put them sideways. It gives me a, a good depth all around. Another trick you can do is take one of your vinyl plankings and set it between the, the end pieces and the wall. And that will create the same uh, distance you need to keep the expansion um, distance in there. And you can just move this down the wall as you need. Uh, I like to have access to the ends of my boards on the uh, on the vertical end so I can hammer them down and to and fro as they adjust things. Sometimes they'll, the links will get adjusted and you'll need to use your, your tool to get them leveled out. So this will keep them all in place and I can pull it out if I need to, to adjust the length. So two more tricks, keeping your board straight. So we know we need to cut our first board to make sure we have enough length on the last board. Again, I don't want any board to be less than 10 inches long. So when you select which end you're going to cut, make sure you cut the end that's going to go against the wall. It can be the flat edge. So you want to leave the female, the part with the interlocking sticking out on the end. Same thing, female interlocking sticking out on this side. So that's how you know. So get you a straight edge and uh, I'm going to cut about this one about 12 inches off. That way I've got a 12 inch board to use again later. You don't want to waste it very much at all. Now you, if you have a small piece, you can use that as a cheater board and I'll show you what the cheater boards are for later. They, they really, really help. So just get you um, something to scribe the, the wood with. I got a piece of copper here from wiring. You can use an ink pen or marker and just get you, scribe that all the way across. 
And that's going to be the part we cut off. Again, this is going to be perfect for us. I get my, you can use a table saw, a skill saw, whatever works best for you. And just make sure you get it lined up. But make sure you wear eye protection, ear protection when you're doing this because if it gets in your eye, not a good day. I've done that before. So I need to go get my eye, eye protection and, and uh, hearing protection. Hopefully you guys have recognized that before I did that and said, Tim, go get your PPE. You passed. So I have the first one secure in. Now I can grab our second one. Again, I'm just going to snap it down into the interlocking piece. Trying to keep everything straight. Grab my hammer. Once you got everything straight there, you can grab your block. You gotta make sure it is pushed up appropriately. And this block has different grooves on it, so you can get it on different edges. So you don't mess up your um, mess up your male or female edges so I just get it right over the edge there and I can make sure everything is nice and straight right here so I just got to do that again there we go and that one is smooth as can be now by for, for my next one I just want to grab I'm doing a, a narrow I just want to get it locked in place there get it right on the edge Okay, get my hammer, lock that in place, make sure everything's pushed up against the... Okay, I'm a little bit off, but I can fix that very easily with my next board. Again, you want to make sure male to female. Now this one I like to attach to the long run. Attach to the long run. Here we go. And then I get that right over there. Once I drop that in place, now I'm going to snap this one, snap that into place, that snaps in nice and smooth. Now I just need to get it over a little bit right there, get it lined up so I can put that smooth edge right on both of those, and then it will line them up perfectly once I get it on there. Okay, just got to do a little bit more, I'm going to do this back here this side. There we go. Almost. There we go. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And you can see I got two different boards here to give that real uh, random appearance. So we've got a two big ones and two small ones and that is smooth as can be. Perfect edge. Let me just get a little bit more right there. That's perfect. Now let's move on down the line. Next one in line, let's get it lined up. There we go. Make sure it's lined up as good as possible. And that way I can snap it in place. That really locks it in place. And now we, we are perfectly lined up on all edges. Ready to do our last one on this lay. We'll have to do a cut. Measured this last one to need to be 19 inches long. I'm gonna get and put this right over here. Get it lined up perfectly. Okay. Gotta make sure it's seated all the way across it is a little bit off on the edge there so we'll do a little straightening there a little bit more perfect now still perfect on the top all the way out to the edge now where our banister our stair rail is going to go I'm going to end up having to I don't really know the width of that yet so I went long 
definitely want to be long, don't want to be short. And then I can always get a skill saw and trim off however much I need to keep that quarter inch gap. Not a problem. Now, we have got the first one down. That's the hard part, guys. Getting the first one down. Now, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to interlock different ones. So before, when I did the two different sizes, I did a narrow one first and then a medium one. And then when I do the next one, I'll do a medium one first and a narrow one and I'll rotate where they are in the pattern. So not only am I rotating large one patterns, I'm rotating when I do the medium and small into the pattern. It's gonna look beautiful. I'm gonna put you on time lapse. You can watch as I do the rest of this floor before we get to our next corner or door facing cut. So we've come to our first obstacle, which is this column here. And you can see we've got our flooring all the way up to it. Now we can use, again, one of these devices here. Push up all the way across, get your lines out there. And that will tell you the size you need to cut out of your board. Now, of course, the width of the board and how far it engages into the column, this isn't going to help you with. So what you can do, this is really, really slick, is use a cheater board. I mentioned a cheater board earlier. It's just a scrap piece of flooring you've got. And what you do is you set your uh, lay that's going to go in this location around your obstacle. You put it in the previous lay's position. So I've got this exactly lined up to where the previous board is. Take your cheater board and you line up. Again, the cheater board is the exact same width as the board you're using. So what you're gonna do is put it right up to it, get a little more space to count for that expansion. And then you see this distance here is actually gonna be the exact distance because this, this measurement here, when I put this board in, is gonna be this position right here. So this cheater board, accounts for this column. So I take a marker, a pen, pencil, and I mark right there and right here. Slide this over, accounting for expansion on this side of the column. Mark this line and back. So then when I remove it, I've got a square right here, and then I can cut that out, and this will fit perfectly around this obstacle. Cheater boards, awesome tip. I almost forgot to give you this very important tip. You don't just measure the length of your room, you know, so your last board is not less than 10 inches long. You also want to measure the width of your room. So as the boards get closer and closer to the long wall, that last board, you don't want it to be three inches or less. I mean, um, if it's less than three inches, it doesn't, it doesn't want to click in place and it doesn't want to stay in place. If you have a short one like that, you may need to glue that last one in. Sometimes Sometimes you'll have obstacles to go around and you just can't help having a small piece like that. So what you can do there is put a little bit of glue, wood glue or a Gorilla Glue, and then you snap it in place and, and put some pressure on it, keep it there, and then that will uh, lock it in place. Otherwise, a, a very narrow piece won't stay there. So again, measure the width, divide by how uh, wide your planking is, and then try to e equal it out. So you have, say, uh, uh, three and a half inches starting board, you'd rip it three and a half inches, and your last one would be three and a half inches also if you had a seven inch board. Bigger gives you more room to play with. So again, that's a very, very important thing. I almost failed to mention that. So I've got my cheater board. I'm gonna move it over 
about a quarter of an inch. That way I've got expansion. And then I just want to mark that distance right there. Again, this is gonna be exact distance. It has to go through there. And this distance here is gonna be that perfect distance there. I'll mark the back side. Slide this over. Little bit of a room for expansion. Make sure it's square on there. Mark that over. And now I'll be able to cut out that square right there and that will lay perfectly around this obstacle. We have our plank marked out where we need to cut. Now you can use a radial arm saw, miter saw, table saw, jigsaw, hand saw, multi-purpose tool, whatever you've got, you can do vinyl plank flooring. So we're just gonna cut out what we can with our, uh, our equipment here. And I'm probably gonna use the multi-purpose tool to cut out this angle here because you really can't do that with a uh, miter radial arm saw or a table saw and I don't have my jigsaw with me. So we're gonna use the multi-purpose tool to get that, that, that linear cut on this side. Awesome, now we've got our cut out. We're ready to install it around our obstacle. All right, let's see if our board fits. Get it on up into the location it needs to be. Slide it down. All right, that's exactly where it needs to be. Oh, we've got a perfect gap there. Everything fits perfectly all the way around it. Now we have the top of our stairs. We've got an opening right here. So what I'm gonna do there, take my pencil, and on the bottom, looks like everything lined up, score the bottom, score the bottom. And then when I lift it up, you'll see I've got the marking right there and I'm gonna cut a half inch more all the way around and that will leave this gap right here. Now when we go to do the top of our stairs, I can take again, take the skill saw and cut this off uh, at the perfect depth. But this is gonna get our cut out for the top of the stairs. Time to install our board, so let's go ahead and Line up the long edge, get it ready to drop in, get it drop in right there. Once you got it dropped in, you can hammer that side down, get our block, lock it in place. All right, make sure you don't feel anything high. A little bit right there. perfect installation around our first obstacle. We come to our next obstacle, the door facing leading into the bathroom. We've got the flooring done all the way up. You can see we got about a four inch gap between the wall and the flooring, which is fine because we've calculated out that this flooring is gonna go all the way to the back wall of the bathroom without a cut. So the first one, cut short. The last one lays perfectly and we've got about three or four inches here. So that, that, that calculation came out just right for us, but we've got to get through this door facing. And to do that, it's when you get your cheater board again. Cheater boards work for so many good things. What they're gonna do here is get us under our door facing. These are, these are undercut a little bit, 
but it doesn't go all the way through. So we're gonna have to use our multi-tool, cut this all the way, cut the facing, the frame, and then that way the flooring will slide under, and there's a trick to that as well. We'll show you that as soon as we get these cut. Looks like we go under well on the inside facing. We don't go all the way under on this facing. So we need to get this one cut out as well. So let's go on this side. That slides right under perfectly now. You can see that. Now one thing you really gotta do Make sure you clean all this up. You cannot leave little pieces like that for your flooring to sit on and cause deviations. That is not good. So we need to get a dustpan, broom, and clean this up. Get it really nice and clean. That way everything slides under perfectly. To calculate how we need to go under our door facing, I've got one of my narrow boards. The narrow boards work great here since I just have a narrow piece. If I was doing all the same board width, it's the same calculation. I'm just, I have a narrow one so it works good for me. So I set it right where it would go, just like we did on our previous obstacle, right where it would go on the previous lay, get a, a cheater board of the same width, and then I just have to put it up to where it's gonna go. Now I wanna go under this door facing, so I gotta come back about that far. So this board's gonna go completely under here and cover any opening, any gap. So that right there should be good. Okay, I'll just mark right here. Now there, here, this is gonna get it to right there. I need to go under there. So what I'm gonna do is go about a quarter inch less than this. So I'm gonna mark this, this is the pencil. Um, but whenever I get done, I'm gonna mark this and go a quarter inch less. So I'll mark a quarter inch inside here and this board will go up under this board, still have my quarter inch gap there, go up under here, it's gonna fit perfectly. Got our board we cut out and then what we gotta do, we can't, we can't drop and lock because it can't get under here, right? So that, that's not gonna work. Our normal drop and lock is not gonna work. So what we have to do is improvise. We've got to go under, okay, we go under the facing, go all the way down to the edge, lift up on the end and drop it in the groove there, okay? So we got it dropped in there and we're cued up there. And I gotta lift up and drop it in there. Once everything's dropped in, you can see we are completely sealed up around our door facing here. So then, get my block. I can go ahead and set this in. Okay, that is set in there. Almost set in there. Okay, now we've got to set this in, okay? So we've already drop and lock on the end there. That's when I get this tool. This tool is perfect for this. It's got little Velcro, it keeps it from messing the floor up and I can just go. Gotta get up over that. There we go, it dropped in place. Awesome. That looks so good. All right. Perfect seam all the way around. Cover completely, quarter inch gap here. Covering our door facing, that looks great. Now we have the same cut to make on this side. So again, got my board laid on the previous lay, got my cheater board the same width. Again, I want to embed about a quarter inch into it, right there, so that, I like going about a quarter inch, there we go. So I'll mark that, and then I'll mark right here. And that's the offset, and I'm gonna go, again, a, a half inch or so, into this, so it goes under this board, but gives me my quarter inch gap there. So I'm gonna cut just a half inch short into this. It's gonna be perfect. Again, we do this one very similar. I bring it to the end here, 
get it up under, slide it down, and then I'm gonna drop it in the pl in place, right in there, drop it in place, get the, the side lined up with the drop in, and you can see we got a perfect coverage right there. Okay, everything looks good here, so I can actually tap that down in first, lock this, lock right in place there. Now I gotta go down and do the uh, wall side, begin with our handy dandy tool. Come down to the end, gotta make sure it's in place. It is. Awesome. Make sure. Perfect. 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 Man, that looks wonderful. Wonderful. So we're into our door facing now, guys. So now we just gotta get on the inside. Once we get past this door facing, we are gonna be done with upstairs in this loft. Now we're on the inside of our door facing. What I've done is got two cheater boards the same width as the one we're putting down. That way I could get the distance over. I interlocked them together, just kind of put them in place. And uh, so that's gonna give me, give me my uh, distance I need to cut. See, I went under this facing about a half inch. So I'm gonna put a line right here and that'll tell me where I need to cut this way. And then this direction, again, I can't go on the edge here because it'll be too far over there. So I need to go under here, but still be a quarter of an inch off from that side. So that's gonna be my line right here. So let's get it right there. Okay, so that's gonna go right there. And then right here is gonna give me my line to go under. All right, so now I've got a line here, a line here, I can cut this out and that will go under there. I can completely take this out. I just got it slid up under there. There we go. And this will slide up under there, you can see, and it'll be perfect cut. And then we'll have to do that in right there, which is gonna be really easy with uh, the amount we've got overlapping. We've got our cut. We just gotta slide it. I wanna get it in the groove there. So I can slide it down under. And again, I got about a quarter inch down here by my shower. We are up under. So then I just have to uh, tap there. I can lock it in place. Get it. There we go. Lock it. All right, we are locked in place, perfectly sealed there. Got our gap over here for our trim. Got our gap for our expansion by our shower. We're ready to do that last piece and this door facing will be done and this shower will go all the way through, but we still have our toilet hole, the, the drain for the toilet to go around. So we'll get that one as well and we'll be done with the loft. So this is my end cut and my door facing, and I put it up here, and if I was to put a line here and do all my stuff here and cut this off, this is what I need to start. This is, you always gotta remember to flip it around backwards. Once you flip it around backwards and get your distance from your, from your edge, then you can mark, mark your line where you wanna make your end cut. Cut this off, then you'll be able to flip this around and we can do our cheater board cuts. So we'll cut this and be right back. Now that we've got our board cut the correct length, we got it in place of this leg. Of course, you know it's gonna go up in there. And then we have our cheater board. You've seen me do this before. I go about a half inch in. Gives me that line right there. Okay, let me get sure that's straight. There we are. Again, it's gonna go pretty deep. Okay, I've got that line. Now I gotta know how far I'm gonna go in. So I'm gonna come back about right there. So the, here is this line. So I can cut this line and this line, cut all this out. That will slide up in there, door facing done. Now we can slide our board on up in there. Now it's gonna have to get up over that lip there. I've got a little nail, I can there we go, it slid right up over it. Now we can start pounding it in to get a nice good seat. All right, clear. We got a little bit more in there to engage. 
looks really good. And get everything else. Oh yeah, now get that clear. Perfect. We got really lucky with these last two obstacles. The first being the corner by the tub. Um, all we had to do was again, put our board down, use our cheater board, cut out the end of that. And then this board stopped right before the toilet. And then we just had to uh, cut one the right length and it's still, it's 12 and a half inches. So it's definitely sufficient for a minimum length board. And then the board gonna go on this side of this one, may just need a little bit cut out around this pipe to give that to clearance, but it's gonna work out just perfect. So let's get these last boards uh, installed in the bathroom and the upstairs loft will be done with our life-proof Walton Oak vinyl plank flooring. As we finish up with this job, you may be wondering yourself, Tim, hey, what do you do with your uh, shower or tub edge uh, and your expansion and contraction uh, gap? Well. Yeah, the, the boards on, in this application run this way, so they're all jiggity-jaggedy at the end there, and you've got a quarter-inch gap, and you have to allow for that expansion. And this is plastic, porcelain, or vinyl, and you can't you know nail a quarter round into it, but what you can do is get some of this vinyl quarter round. Guys, this is vinyl quarter round with a 3M sticky back on it, and uh, this is white, matches our tub perfectly. You can get different colors, and you can see it's got like a red gel-like material with a 3M sticky on it, and we will put this on the tub or shower base, and it will stick to it, keep water out from coming on the top, and of course, sit right on top of our vinyl plank flooring. It's not gonna be putting any weight on it, no pressure, but will allow that expansion and contraction work perfectly. And you're saying, hey Tim, well, we've got tile, or we've got carpet in between our rooms. You didn't do any transitions. Well, they make transitions also. Life Proof uh, makes transitions for uh, going from tile to a, a, um, your vinyl plank flooring. And where that is, you'll have a T transition. So both pieces will go up under it and give a smooth transition. If you've got carpet, they make a carpet transition where one side will come down smooth on the carpet. The other side will have a little void where the, the uh, vinyl plank form will go up under it. So you, you, they've got you covered there. We don't need any for our applications other than this quarter round for our shower tub. So transitions, got you taken care of. Hope you enjoyed watching us install this life-proof vinyl plank flooring by Home Depot. It went down like a charm here in this floor. Very few mistakes. The tips and tricks I gave will help you as well anytime you're putting down a laminate flooring, vinyl plank flooring, engineered hardwoods. They're pretty much all the same with the same techniques. Um, this light coming in the window here does not do this Walton Oak color justice. The grays, the browns, and the blacks are going to match perfectly with the dark gray cabinets we have downstairs in the kitchen. And of course, the light gray painted uh, drywall. We've got a little bit of drywall in here to counteract all those dark wood tones. And of course, the natural color stain on our uh, white pine and Douglas fir timbers. Going to be a beautiful, beautiful home for um, my mother, Grandma Carol, to live in. And guys, if you liked today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up hit the notification bell to be notified anytime a new video comes out on ridge life and if you haven't subscribed to ridge life already what are you waiting for subscribe now i sure appreciate it and as always i hope everyone has a blessed blessed day and go ridge life